Hi guys, um, welcome to STEAM. Today we're talking about circuits. I'm really sorry I couldn't be with you in person today, um, but I'm hoping this will be just as good and it's something that you can do on your own. Um, I will be back on Friday, so I will see you on Friday for a live class, okay? Um, so today we're talking about circuits and um, we're going to make a graphite circuit, but we're going to learn about them first. So I'm gonna share my screen with you and we are going to watch a quick video about how circuits work. Have you ever wondered how a flashlight works? Sure, it seems pretty simple. All you have to do is move a switch or press a button and ta-da, the light comes on. But what really makes the light go on? Right you are, Squeaks. It's electricity that makes the light go on. You probably already know something about the electricity that powers things in your house. Well, the electricity in a flashlight comes from the batteries that are inside. The electricity flows from the battery to the light bulb. And when the electricity goes through the bulb, the flashlight lights up. But the electricity doesn't just jump from the battery right to the bulb. In order to get from the battery to the light bulb, the electricity has to go along a specific path. And that path is called a circuit. If you listen to the word circuit, it kind of sounds like a shape you might know. Let's name some shapes and see which one sounds like circuit. Triangle? No. Square? No. I know. Circle. And if you look at a circle, you can see that it goes around and around and doesn't have any spaces or gaps in it. And that's true of a circuit, too. There can't be any spaces in the path that electricity takes to get from a battery to a light bulb. In a circuit, if electricity doesn't have a path to travel on, it stops. It's a little like a train on train tracks. When there's no more track, the train stops. So let's see how a simple circuit works. The battery is what we call the power source. That is, it's where the electricity comes from in this circuit. The electricity flows from the power source on the path of the circuit. And a lot of the time, that path is made by some kind of a wire. The circuit then leads to whatever we want to power. In this circuit, that's a light bulb. As the electricity goes through the bulb, the bulb lights up. The electricity leaves the bulb and flows back through the battery. Then it follows the circuit all over again. As long as there are no spaces in the circuit, the bulb will stay lit. But what if we want to turn the light on and off? Then we have to break the circuit, which means we need to put a space in it somewhere to stop the flow of electricity. So we use a switch. A switch allows us to make a space in the circuit if we want to. When the switch is on, there's no space in the circuit and the light bulb is lit. But when we move the switch off, we open up a space. The electricity can't jump over the space, so it can't reach the light bulb, and the light bulb stays off. Okay, so I'm going to try to build my own circuit using some of the parts that I have here. I have a power... Okay, so we're going to stop it right there because we are going to build our own circuit, um, not the same as as she is. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen with you guys. Um, and... Um, I am going to talk to you about how to build a graphite circuit. So as we know, and we made Maggie the electromagnet, um, lots, there are metals that are conductive of electricity. And one of those metals is copper. Um, and But graphite is also a conductive um, material. So we are going to create a graphite circuit. So the most common thing that graphite can be found in is pencils. Um, and I included in your kit um, graphite pencils. These are drawing pencils, so they have a lot more graphite in them than, say, a pencil that you would use at school, which might not have quite as much. So we needed it to be um, a very conductive because graphite, it while it's conductive, it is not one of the most conductive materials, so it needs to be as much graphite as possible. So everybody should have one of these um, black uh, drawing pencils in your kit. So you should have had 
um, the black drawing pencil. You should have um, grabbed a sheet of paper out of the packet, um, not the thick paper, but like the thin printer paper. Also in there, um, you should have had um, some different color light bulbs, um, different color LED light bulbs. The different colors take more or less energy to light up. So we're going to try a whole bunch of them and see which ones work the best. Um, and what I will tell you is um, the original um, experiment that I had downloaded, I tried to make it work um, with the materials that I sent to you in just your little baggie, and I could not get it to work. And if I couldn't get it to work, I know that because I'm not with you, um, it's going to be really hard for you guys to get it to work. So I tried to figure out how we could change that to make it work with the materials that I've previously sent you. So we're going to use some of the materials for Maggie the electro Electromagnet. So you can either use the battery that came with Maggie the Electromagnet, or um, where you can use a 9 volt battery if your family has one, or you can use two double A's, I sent you one double A, um, we might need to double that up to make it two double A's, okay? We are going to need some tape. We are going to need um, the wire from Maggie, the electromagnet, and we're gonna have to pull back out our sandpaper. Um, if you guys, you guys might have had some leftover wire and then you wouldn't have to take apart Maggie, your electromagnet, um, and, and that's great. So like I had some some leftover wire from mine so that's kind of what I'm using um, and and we're going to need some tape and a pair of scissors so the first thing we're going to do um, is tape our two batteries together um, if you have uh, batteries um, and what I'm going to use is just my, my clear tape here um, you need to tape, so on your battery, you're going to see that there is a, a negative side and you're going to see that there is a positive side. Um, when you tape them together, the negative side and the positive side have to go together. You can't put the negative to the negative um, or it will not work. Um, so, uh, all right. And it needs to be a pretty tight connection. So. Um, what I found in mine was that I ended up having to push them together to make sure that the connection was tight enough um, when I was ready, but this will help hold everything together so batteries aren't rolling all around all over the place. Um, so I, now I have my two batteries connected together. Um, if you use a 9 volt battery, you do not need to do that. Um, so then I have a positive end down here and a negative end over here. If you have a nine volt battery, um, one of the two nodes on top is positive and the other one is negative. Um, so you don't have, you can skip all of these steps if you have a nine volt battery. The other thing that next thing you're going to do is cut two pieces of wire um, from your leftover Maggie, the electromagnet wire. Um, and um, then you're going to, just like we did with Maggie the electromagnet, take the red off of the wire, the red coating, so that the copper shows. Um, so you're just going to use your sandpaper to get to get that off. You need to make sure it's off really good so we can get a really good connection there. Um, and so just pull it through so that we can have a good connection. So I have removed to the red, so all I have left is the copper. Um, and you're going to need to do that with two short pieces because we need one coming off the negative side and one coming off the positive side. Um, so this is the thing about science, right? Sometimes science experiments work and sometimes they don't. And that's the great thing about science is that um, you keep working on things until you make it work. Um, so I have and have modified this to um, get it to work. Okay, so we now have this. So what I'm going to do is create kind of a loop or like a little hook on the top of one side and then I'm gonna tape that side to the battery. Uh, I'm going to, when I tape it on the end, I'm gonna make sure that it is touching the little uh, bump on the end there. Okay, and we're just gonna tape that on there. 
So that's the positive side that has the little bump. Yeah. Uh, the negative side is flat. So I'm going to um, do the same thing, create a little hook so that um, I get some good coverage on the bottom of my battery. And I'm gonna tape that on the negative side down here, okay? So now I have two batteries taped together with two wires coming off on either end, right? Um, so, so now we're gonna put this down. So now I am going to go back to my gallery view. I am going to start this other video so that you can you can see what we are doing here. Okay. Uh, so my other screen is frozen. All right. So we're going to draw a circuit. Okay. So we're going to make sure that it is a little bit small because graphite's not a great conductor. So you don't want to draw something really big that covers your whole sheet of paper because it might not be enough. Um, it might be too much for the circuit to be able to get through. So we're going to start with something pretty small. So I'm going to, and we have to make our graphite circuit pretty thick. Okay. So I'm going to start with um, two dots. Um, I, one is a positive dot and the other one is a negative dot. And so as you, I'm drawing, you can see that some of the graphite shavings are just coming off the pencil. Um, now we're going to make some pretty thick lines. So we're going to, and you can make your graphite circuit whatever you want. If you want to make it a circle, that's fine. If you want to draw a cat face, also fine, um, you can get creative. So um, we wanna make sure that our graphite lines are pretty thick so that um, it's as much graphite as possible to um, kind of transfer the current, okay? So making one on either side. So we need two openings, one plus and one minus. Okay, so one positive and one negative. Okay, so our positive sides are both on the same side. So if we have positives on one side and negatives on the other, and you might want to label them so that um, it is easy for you to figure out. Okay, now we have all of these light bulbs. You should um, have like five of them. I'm not quite sure where my yellow one just went to. Um, so I've got these. Um, what I will tell you is that um, the your light bulb has two legs on it. Um, and so um, when you sand your, your legs up, the longer leg is the positive side. Okay, so the longer leg is the positive side. So we're going to kind of give this um, tweak. We're gonna make it so that um, they go the either way. The longer one is the positive side. So we're going to make sure we connect that to the positive side. And I hope I get this right now that I have, um, and we're just gonna tape it down so that it sticks good, okay? Um, be careful not to put too much tape that you're crossing over the circuit. Um, you don't want to cover up the other side of the circuit where our battery is going to be. Okay, so the positive side and the negative side. Okay. All right. So we're going to tape that down so that there's a nice connection. All right. So we have our blue light bulb, our LED light bulb stuck there. Now we'll remove these. Okay, now we're gonna match up our positive side and our negative side of the batteries with the positive side and the negative side of the circuit. So <clears throat> we'll tape, just um, as you're looking at the battery, make sure that the the plus side is on the positive side and the, the minus side is on the negative side, okay? So we're gonna 
Make sure those are stuck down good here. Make sure that has a good connection. Okay. All right. So I've got that stuck down. Um, what I had found before was that my um, this did not have a great connection unless I pushed them together. And your light might be very, very faint. So let's see if I can get it to light up. It's really hard to see if it's lighting up or not in the blue. Um, we can try switching it out, making sure that everything is really tight. Try switching it out with a different color bulb to see if we can get it to light up. Up oh, there it goes, there it goes. It's now lighting up. So now I have a good connection. Um, can you see my bulb lighting up there? So I have a good connection now. Everything is tight and working and my bulb is, is lit up. So sometimes it's just um, making sure that everything has a good connection. So if you can't get it to work, try reconnecting um, your, um, pushing down tighter um, on the legs of the light bulb into the graphite um, and then it will light up um, or it should light up. So let's see if I can slip this out and um, at, try a different color light bulb. I just slipped the legs of the light bulb out because if you pull up the tape it removes some of the graphite. So let's see Let's see, all right, so I have a, the green light bulb here. Um, here's my longer side that's positive and my shorter side that's negative. Let's see if I can get the, whoops, green one to light up. Dropped it. All right. So we'll slip this back in here. Oops. See if we can get it stuck in there. Oh, the green one lights up really good. Can you see the green one lighting up? Really good. Um, so that's it off um, and that's it on. Um, just making sure that that circuit, that connection is really tight. So go ahead and, and um, you know, play with your circuits. Um, see if you can draw maybe something different, see if you can get different color light bulbs to work. Um, and if, if you just are using the, um, the other type of battery, you don't have to add these wires. You just um, put the battery um, upside down on the correct side. So either on the positive side or the negative side. So you can, um, you can not use the wires. So I hope this has been fun for you and I will see you guys in person on Friday. Bye-bye.